just so people can join later. All right, so, um, so Baturgy is, is one piece of software. Um, and that piece of software is, like I said, it's, it's Grimoire Lab. Um, Georg, can you post the link to? Yes, thank you. I was, I was, uh, was. The link to which page? The repository, the Grimoire Lab, maybe the KL repo. Yep. And so part of what, um, there's also another uh, tool out there called Augur, which is um, what Derek who just joined and Keanu are working on. And that's out of the University of Missouri. And so there, there are a number of pieces of software. There's another one called Craigit as well, which is a tool that Daniel German is working on. So there's, there's different pieces of software that we also support in this community that we can use to actually implement the metrics. So if there are metrics that we're trying to understand with respect to the risk category, the question becomes, can we actually implement this metric technically? Is that even possible? So just because you have a wish for something doesn't mean that we can do it technically. And obviously we have found that some of the metrics we can gather from online trace data, say from like the GitHub API, or from a mail list, but other metrics are, are quite difficult to capture um, with respect to that kind of data. So for example, understanding diversity of speakers at your conference. Uh, you can't get that obviously from, from a GitHub API. So, so different metrics require different ways of, of collection. Some are more real time, some are a little bit longer. So on one hand, we have the metrics that are implementation agnostic. On the other hand, we have the, the pieces of software which are helping us implement and, and think about these metrics as they're implemented in practice. All right, so we have two different kind of, kind of groups working on this right now. One is the Gourmore Lab group and one is the Augur group. Then kind of in between, in between software and in between metrics, we have working groups that are actually honing in on the growth, maturity, and decline category, or honing in on the diversity and inclusion category. So they're kind of the bridge, serving as the, the um, I don't know, the in-practice bridge between the software and the metrics. So that's, that's kind of the, not kind of, that is the structure of the, the chaos project, right? And so Georg posted a link to the, to Grimoire Lab, right? So that's the Grimoire Lab repository. And then he also posted the link to the software repository. And then can you just post the link to the metrics repository as well? Yeah, sure. Okay. Sounds great. Yeah, so then the questions you know, that kind of go back to you and you don't have to answer them now, or what are the things that Alfresco would want to see? I mean, what, what do you care about when it comes to understanding the projects that you're about ready to engage in? Or what do you care about on the projects that you want to support? Well, mm, let me see. Uh, so we have, uh, so our software is done by mm, very, mm, different projects and several different projects. Yeah. But uh, all all around uh, these uh, those projects, uh, these projects we have uh, a community, yep. done by um, customer partners and enthusiasts, and we have uh, so we we are aware about thousands of people around the, the, the this software. But of course, we usually say that the community is like a, a sort of funnel. So we, we are interested to understand uh, mm, the, first of all, how this funnel is. So for example, I have lots of metrics in my mind, uh, of course, available for us. So for example, how many mm, developers or technical guys are using, because we, we I am more interested on the on the technical developers and technical skills person because it's a different stuff if we, if we talk about of course user prospect or stuff like that we are interested more on the 
on the technical uh, personas, let me say. So how many of them are uh, using the software in which way? Uh, how many of them are contributing, for example, raising questions, answering questions, supporting the other people in the community? Uh, how many they are contributing to the source code? How many of them? Uh, but I mean, it's not only how many of them, but which is the real behavior behind this. So, uh, and uh, yeah, so we are trying also to classify, classify and, uh, and understand which are the personas there, not only in terms of skills, uh, but more in terms of behavior. So is there around people that uh, come to see our technology and see how it works? Uh, okay, they don't like, they go away or they stay, why uh, they are staying? They're staying because they have find, uh, they're finding supportive community because we have uh, a great product or, or, or an awful product or they go away. Uh, what they would like to, to have more or less differently uh, and stuff like that. So let me say, uh, we would like, and of course, all these uh, pictures of the, of the current community is something we would like to see changing in time. So uh, all the, what you were saying, are we growing? Are we there or are we declining in terms of, uh, of, uh, uh, of, yeah, of, of time passing? And yeah, so one of the challenge we have is that definitely we have a, 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 a variety of technology that we are using because we have uh, uh, Docker stuff, Kubernetes stuff, uh, uh, Angular stuff, uh, backend Java stuff, uh, GitHub projects, uh, GitLab projects, uh, um, and lots of lots of uh, sources. I have a background also in business intelligence that I usually call this all these sources as a variety of different stuff. So the Jira ticket, uh, the, the, the community portal we have, there is a Jive portal, it's a collaboration place, uh, quite known, uh, GitHub of course, and stuff like that. So I mean, let me say, if I can summarize everything, I would like to say that, uh, mm, as, I, as I saw in the project, the healthy of our community, and of course, the LT of the community is connected, of course, to the product too. So it's not it's not the LT of the community because uh, it's the LT of the, of the people that has attended, but it's the LT of the company too. So, in few words, this is what what uh, I'm working on, and I would like. Yeah, I I already have some metrics and something that I use internally. But when I saw your project, I say, hey guys, but. They are working on something, you know, shared and something more, uh, yeah, shared. I think it's an open source. I say also, so I would like to, uh, yeah, understand more about that. And, my, and again, my goal is to uh, clarify better the earth of our community because we are talking about, uh, let me say, thousand of people around our services. Uh, for example, let me say in our la latest uh, numbers inside the community portal, we are talking about 70,000 of people registered in the portal. But of course, if you, if you go down in uh, uh, measuring the active members, so people that on daily basis have access to the portal or uh, see at least one piece of content, like a blog post, a question, an answer or stuff like that, of course, the the number is uh, stable around 1,000 of people. So from 70,000 to 1,000. And of course, if you take a look at the advocates or the most uh, active members, we, 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 we go down to uh, several dozen, but dozens. So we would like to have uh, this kind of, uh, of metrics and numbers and understand better about, about did I talk enough or not? No, that's, this is great. So it sounds like <laughs> at Alfresco, you have your own projects that you are supporting, the projects that are, that are core to your organization. But then, of course, you are pulling projects in that contribute to the, to the it's part of the whole project ecosystem. So you care about the health of your own, and then you care about the health of external projects. Okay. 
Um, did you take Did you take a look at that that link there that Georg put in there? The last one. Uh, GitHub. Uh, the one about the metrics. Yeah. I'm Just a sure. pure example. So if you click on that, so this yeah. is the, this is the metrics repository. And you see there we have, if you scroll down just a little bit, we have diversity and inclusion, MD, growth, maturity, and decline, MD, risk, and value. So if you click on, say, growth, maturity, and decline, that markdown. Yeah. I mean, uh, you see, this is kind of what has come of things over time. That people have, these have kind of bubbled to the top as being relevant to organizations. Now, the, this is kind of the first step in just identifying what those metrics are that people seem to care about. I think probably down the road, we have to start asking questions of, as we see these change, what do we do? Mm. You know, what actions do people take based on seeing these metrics change? So these may or may not be relevant to you. No, no, they are. In my case, and again, uh, in my case, I think that uh, uh, I'm, 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 I'm thinking, I'm, I'm considering right now also other metrics in mm -hmm. these uh, growth maturity decline. For example, the, I, just to mention one, uh, how many times people are consuming our artifacts, uh, uh, for example, that we have on Nexus, on the Docker images, on uh, or publish in some places uh, because uh, let me say open initiation, close initiation. Uh, this is for sure. very committed and active people inside our community. So we have uh, lots of people that are more shy, more probably beginners or newbies, uh, and they start working with our technology without really contributing back to the to the. Uh, to the project and uh, and yeah I'll, me so we as an organization would like to understand more also about them because it, it is part of our community take a look at um, go back and take a look at the value the one called value and I, I apologize if I repeat things that for you are definitely no, obvious uh, no, I, 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 it's, I, I think it's fantastic to talk through this <laughs> many, many times. I have no problem with that at all. So if you take a look at the value. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yep. software download, yeah. Yep. So considerably mm. uh, yeah. smaller than growth, maturity, and decline. So if you take a look, say, for example, at the last one, the V index. V index. Yep, that's the number of basically trying to measure the downstream dependencies of a project and then dependencies of those dependencies. So taking a look at kind of the impact that a project has. So something like Angular would probably have a high number of dependencies downstream, right? But maybe this is also a little number of installs yeah. of a project. Maybe this is more in line with, it's kind of understanding the impact of a project within the world. Yep. Yeah. So, so from a metric side, right, these are the places if you're interested in, in trying to measure something else, really honestly, just from a um, workflow perspective, just issue a pull request. Mm -hmm. and, and we talk through what the new metric is that you would like to propose. Well, I think, I think the, uh, I mean, uh, of course, uh, be, before any, any pull request, uh, I would prefer to be, more let me say you can just uh, open an issue how about that <laughs> no 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 i mean it's a no no it's it's a matter also to be aligned with the with the team and then the group uh, i mean before any pull request i would like to be more uh, expert and skilled on the content because again this is not easy so there are lots of variety of things around there so uh i was uh, so one of the questions I have in mind before joining the meeting is to understand how to move the first steps. So, I mean, I had the chance also to went through the uh, project, the main on the technological part, uh, less on the, on, the, on the KPIs here. And thank you for sharing because I will study that content too, this sure. content. Uh, 
but I was I was thinking also to to try to understand how to start using the things that you already have and because probably if I start to use this in my environment I can uh, better see the gaps if there are get, some gaps uh, yep. uh, gaps there are of course and uh, and try to understand uh, better also the project do, do you think it's a good approach do you yeah. suggest another approach I mean my I guess probably my, my next suggestion would be after checking out these metrics is to to do an install of Grimoire Lab and do an install of Augur as well. They're, they're two different tools, but they're a, kind of accomplishing um, the same thing with respect to trying to help us to deploy these metrics. So, uh, Derek, you want to talk a little bit about Augur? So Derek's one of the lead developers on Augur here. Yeah, so we've we've really built Augur like in line um, with the metrics committee in terms of like we we really want to build a platform that enables us to prototype and um, like visualize new metrics really really quickly. Um, and so uh, Augur is uh, like Python on the back end, so we can use pandas and everything that pandas gives us. Um, and then it's JavaScript at Vue.js on the front end. Um, so we can build uh, visualizations with D3. And so there's a lot of flexibility in what we can do. Um, right now we're using um, the GitHub API and GH Torrent primarily, which are both focused on um, GitHub repositories. Um, but I'm currently working on adding support to things like Git and uh, some other data collectors for like mailing lists. Um, and so I think that um, you know, where like Augur is really going to be able to shine is when we have like a metric that, you know, for instance, with risk that might be more difficult to um, do, we have a lot of uh, foundational stuff there that lets us build it. And it should be it's pretty rapidly deployable at this point in a Docker container. Yeah, so it's Dockerized. Um, and our, uh, our version that we're running in production is. Um, is using that Docker container. So where is the, if somebody downloaded the Docker container, where is the torrent? So Francesco, the GH torrent database is basically just what it sounds like. It's the GitHub. <laughs> it's like everything from GitHub just put into a, to a massive database. Where is that? Do people have access to that? Um, so we have a version that um, you're welcome to reach out to us and we can give you access to. Um, that like we're, for people who are doing chaos stuff that we're, we're happy to share access to our database. Um, and then it's also on ghtorrent.org. Um, they ha have instructions on how to download it and install it as well. Okay, cool. Um, and then there's no, I don't think there's anybody here from Grimoire Lab. So Francesco, so Grimoire Lab is the other, the other one that I'd recommend that you take a look at. Um, it's from an organization. Yeah I, yeah. yeah, I I saw the grow more uh, lab stuff. That I, I, is it, is, am I right if I say that it's more an Elastic plus Kibana stuff uh, or right. Elastic uh, okay. search database with a Kibana? Yes, because I, I'm confident. I'm familiar with that uh, technology. Both. I mean, not a problem. Yep. Uh, and even if I'm not familiar, I'm I'm, I'm not scared. I'm. I'm I, I'm definitely uh, I'm I'm proudly an engineer, so I love I love to play with that. Well, then these, these should be no trouble for the, neither of these should be trouble for you. So, no, no, um, no, no. I don't. Uh, it's not a matter of trouble. It's a matter of enjoyment. So I, I like to use that stuff. <laughs> so oh, okay. so even, even if I have to learn a lot from these young guys. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> Perfect. And um, the right now, so as Derek pointed out, the auger. Um, where, where they get their data is primarily from GitHub. Uh, you'll see, in, um, you'll see in, in the Grimoire lab, they have a, a component called Percival, which is a very large data aggregator. Uh, I, I don't know, Derek, do you know how many sources they pull from? 10, 15 sources? Yeah, it's quite a few. Uh, I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but it's a bunch. Uh, yeah, so they have a, a much larger data aggregator. 
Yes, because one of, of my initial uh, questions were exactly about the, the collection, so harvesting the, those data from where the data are. So now, because my first understanding is that uh, probably you, I, I, so me as a, as a potential, let me say, uh, user of this kind of stuff, I can, I should develop something by myself to, to lead to extract the data. But I, I understand from what you say that this is not the case. I mean, there are some connections uh, and the connection uh, are, are there. So. Yep, and I think at least my my long term goal is to have kind of a single large scale aggregator that people can connect to with a variety of different, whether it's elastic elastic indices with Kibana front end or if it's just connecting um, via standard statements and then putting it into JavaScript. I would hope to have some shared large data aggregator that can be connected. And I think Derek, you're even talking or maybe Keanu's looking at this too, with Percival as an aggregator for Augur. Yeah, so we're already in the process because we're moving from looking at just GitHub repositories to everything. And in that we had to talk a lot about how we're gonna persist our data. And um, so we're, we're discussing the use of different graph databases and everything. But, uh, and part of these discussions, we've, uh, we've been working with Keanu to, um, potentially integrate Percival into Augur's data collection. Um, so we might build a database that would include things from what is already out there in Augur and then also try to include things from like libraries IO, which um, provides dependency data and also try to include things from GitHub, you know, so we don't lose, we don't go back at all, you know. Um, and so, yeah, we would really like in the uh, someday to have like just kind of this unified database that would have you know, information from every, everywhere about open source projects. But the big challenge there is trying to automate that process in terms of like, oh, pointing at a repository, automatically finding which mailing list it uses. Like that's a really hard challenge. And um, so a lot of the discussions we're having kind of internally are about like which of those challenges are really needed to be solved and uh, where are we looking to do that, so. Okay, it, it, it sounds to me that I need to move one step ahead on uh, trying this technology. So, I mean, probably the, the, what I understand is to download, install, and make it work, and then uh, probably share some, uh, uh, my experience with you. That'd be great. Yeah. No. That would be fantastic. Yeah, I think I will. Uh, uh, and uh, because also in my organization, I had the chance to talk about your project to some, a couple of other uh, evangelists there, here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so let me say, if I can transform this first meeting something visible for, for us internally and, and, and share the experience with you, I think it could be interesting for both. Yeah, yep. sure. that would be cool. Right on. All right, cool. Nice discussion. Uh, all right. Any... And thank you for sharing all the information oh, for all of you. <laughs> anytime. Uh, wh who else? Anybody else have things for today? Georg, you had kind of alluded to something. Sure. I, my update on the uh, code of conduct team is that I have three candidates who agreed to be on the ballot, uh, but I'm still taking nominations. So if anyone else would like to serve on the Code of Conduct team and be listed on the ballot, then um, please send that to me. Cool. And the next steps then are to send out the ballot and um, next week uh, we should have the votes in. So I was thinking about waiting or doing the votes over the monthly meeting so that I can remind everyone during the monthly meeting, but I don't see the value in waiting. Two weeks, months. right? That's in two weeks, yeah. Okay. So I don't know, what's uh, your all opinion? Should I have a one week voting window or two week voting window? Wait, so you would send out the voting request like now or wait just a little bit and then have the window end on the monthly meeting? Is that what you were saying? Have it end right after, so that okay. everyone can be reminded to vote during the monthly yeah. meeting. 
Well, I think if it's one week, people will wait till the end of the first week. And if it's two weeks, people will wait till the end of the second week. So I don't know that it makes much difference. <laughs> I agree with that. My, my thing is that if there is a meeting and I can remind people. Yeah, yeah I agree. <laughs> then... Vote, vote, vote. All right. No, that's, that's good. I, it, yeah, how about this? Whether it's one week or two weeks, if you can make it go over that monthly meeting, then that would be good. All right. That's all right. Okay, cool. You know. Okay, perfect. Right, cool. Um, let's see a few updates. I have a few updates on Open Source Summit. Well, not really on OSS North America, uh, but Chaos Con. Uh, yes. I wish Sean, what's that? Yes, what's the update? Well, Sean got the rooms. So we're all set at, at University of British Columbia, I think is where we're at, UBC. Uh, so, yeah, so we're all, set, we're all set there. So I don't think there's many more local arrangements that need to be made. But I really honestly don't have any updates with respect to submissions or anything like that because I don't see those things. I and, can speak to that. Oh, you can? Oh, what? Oh, you see I'm on the organizing committee. Oh, well, that's okay. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> so you do know these things. All right, so what's going on with that? So, so to um, just add regarding the rooms, we have two rooms. We can hold up to 80 people total, yeah. but the largest room we have right now is for 50 people. So if we get more people signing up, then we, Sean is trying to get a large room if that okay. happens. With regards to submissions, we have a big fat zero right now. What does it do though? It's due next week. Okay. And so um, I, I just posted on Twitter again to advertise and there is some talks about reaching out to people, um, but I haven't seen any activity in that regard to advertise it more. Okay. Well, I mean, honestly, part of me is like, if we get no submissions or very few, I mean, that's fine. Cause I mean, part of the whole, I think goal is to have some working sessions at chaos con. Yeah. And so if, I mean, if we have, if it's free to attend, which is what we're going with, it's the day before open source summit, North America. Is that 28. 28. Um, so, I mean, if we can have some, some, longer working sessions, for example, working with Grimoire Lab or working with Augur. I mean that, to me, that would be hugely, hugely beneficial. Yeah. So I'm okay either way, to be honest with you. And with submissions due in a week, that's still a week away. So <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> All right, cool. Anything else on Chaos Con? Uh, no. Okay. I just created a pull request for the metrics repository to update the figure that we have in the README. Okay. As I was looking at it, it's uh, was not aligned to the GQM yet. Oh. So the Wait, what was it? What was so, it? What wasn't aligned? The the image. Here, I'll send you copy link location. There, the structure of the chaos metrics repository. Oh. The figure that we had still had a metric name and description. Oh, I see. Okay. So the change that I just now made is to call okay. name and question and be in line with our goal question metric. Okay, thanks. Um, are those other, so, uh, for Keanu and Francesco, basically the way that those metrics pages are set up with the, the category name and then they have a, a, like the name of the metric and a question. It's the questions that the metric is intending to address. Um, so um, that's, the, that's the structure. It's called goal question, goal question metric. So that's the um, structure that you see in there. Has, Garrick, has anybody, are those, Two outstanding or the outstanding pull request to get risk and value in that method are those still open? I haven't looked lately. Yeah, it's still open. Um, we, no one has commented on it uh, since we 
Can we? Well, actually, Ben approved them, so we have two approved. I think we can go ahead and merge it. Yeah, let's merge those in. I was going to say that is fuzzy consensus all the way. So <laughs> it's been a couple of weeks. Then we can spend with those. Um, all right. Cool. Yeah. And it's updated. Ta -da. <laughs> Technology, it's so cool. Uh, anything else from folks? Good. Good. All right. Uh, Google Summer of Code appears to be rolling pretty well. I know we have Keanu here, and Panjal is also uh, updating. So that's cool. It's nice to see everybody contributing Google Summer of Code. Mm, yeah, if that's it for folks, then this is a good, a good meeting. And then until next week, so again, very informal. Is everybody good? Yeah. Yep. Thank you very much. All right, everybody. Thanks. We'll see you around. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Yeah.